You think you're an honest person because you don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal, but here is where you're not honest. How about the truth? Do you tell yourself the truth? Do you tell others the truth? Do you want them to tell you the truth? Or do you just want everything to be nice and comfortable all the time? In life, in business, in everything we do, we're pursuing answers, right? We want to know the truth. We want to grow. We want to learn more. But here's the thing. You need to ask yourself better questions. You need to ask yourself harder questions. You need to face the pain if you really want to know the truth of who you are, where you're going, and what you can do. You say you want answers, but really only the answers that you like. You want the truth, but only when the truth suits you. You want to be honest with people, but you also want to be nice. You don't really want to be mean. And so what it comes down to is if you really want answers, if you really want the truth, if you really want to be honest with yourself and with others, you have to ask better questions. You have to be comfortable with the hard answers, and you have to learn how to grow despite the pain. It's tricky because it's a bit like having a really great conversation. You know when you walk away from a really great conversation, you're like, I really like Jim. It was an amazing conversation. Chances are he spent all of the time listening and you spent all the time talking. People who think that they're having a great conversation isn't the fact that they're sitting across from someone who's a great speaker. They're sitting across from someone who's a great listener. And so you feel heard, you feel understood. And it's the listening skill that makes for the great conversation, not the speaking. You want answers? You want the truth? You want to be able to turn into the person that you are called to be? Then it's not about the pursuit of answers. It's about asking the right questions. The question that you ask yourself, your brain will answer. It's triggered to answer the question whether the question is true or false, whether you're telling yourself lies or not. And so when I ask myself, why am I such a loser? My brain will come up with all the reasons why I'm such a loser. Because, you know, back in grade two, my first girlfriend, I was sitting on the park and I tried to lean over and kiss her on the cheek and she moved and I kissed her elbow. I made her cry. Tanya, I made you cry. And that's just one thing that my brain can come up with right on the spot. Didn't even plan that, can't you tell? But if it's a rainy day, or if it's a long weekend, or if it's a Sunday night and I'm just not excited, I'm not feeling it, I'm gonna ask myself, Mark, why are you such a loser? Why can't you do this? Why can't you make it work? Why is it easy for them to do it and it's so hard for you? Why do you always give in? Why aren't you disciplined enough? And if you ask yourself those questions, your brain will come up with all the reasons why you're not good enough. And when you're sitting across from someone and you're asking them for advice on your business, on your idea, on all the things you're going to do, and you're asking those leading questions because you don't really want the truth, you don't really want the reason why it won't work, or you don't really want the perspective that they're going to be able to give you, you're asking all these soft leading questions. Because if you ask soft leading questions, you won't get any hard answers. You won't have to face the fact that you could make it better, that you could make it work. And when that relationship ends, or that career doesn't pan out, or you don't get the job offer, or you don't get the thing that you want, and you ask yourself, why am I not good enough? What you should be asking yourself is, what do I have to do to get it? Who do I have to be to be able to put myself in that position? What didn't I do in this relationship or in this job career or opportunity that I can carry into the next one so that way I am ready to be the person that I need to be for whatever's next? And so the question you ask will lead to the answers that you deserve. You ask yourself those hard, tough questions. You ask others to be honest with you, but to really listen, to what those answers are, now you have the truthful and hard answers. You actually have the truth. And so you think you're an honest person, but you gotta stop lying to yourself. You gotta stop lying to others and just being nice for the sake of being nice because you don't wanna rock the boat, you don't wanna hurt their feelings, you don't wanna be too direct, you don't wanna be the bearer of bad news. But if you really cared about the person, if you really loved them, if you really cared about yourself, if you really loved yourself, you'd be honest, you tell the truth, you would ask those uncomfortable questions and then you wouldn't run away from the hard answers. And so the two questions that I like to ask myself that always lead to a positive outcome are this. What needs to happen to make it happen? I don't ask myself whether I can do it or can't do it. If I have what I need to make it happen or not make it happen. Just, just ignore all of reality. And just imagine that you were sitting down and being able to sketch out everything that needs to happen. All of the steps, all of the people, all of the money, everything. What needs to happen to make it happen? If I had to go to the moon, what needs to happen to make it happen? Well, I need some way to get up to the moon. I need a, a rocket, right? I need scientists. I need like, what needs to happen to make it happen? Not, do I have the money? Am I capable? Can I do it? Do I have what it takes? Am I fit enough? Am I strong enough? 
Those are all the reasons your brain will tell you why you couldn't do it. What needs to happen to make it happen? And then you sit down and you realize that the roadblocks aren't as big as you think they are. Usually you're just like one or two small things away from connecting the dots that will actually get you closer to your goal. And number two, what would the bold version of Mark do? Listen, there's the scared version of me. There's the bold version of me. There's the confident version of me. There's the one who thinks I've, I've got this in the bag and the one that just shatters because it's just like, I don't even know what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. What would the bold version of me do? Can I get there? Can I put on some music? Can I get excited about this? Can I get myself to the bold version of myself? And if I can't, what would that bold version of Mark do? The bold version of Mark would think big, be bold, right? Say yes. The bold version of Mark, even though I'm feeling really uncomfortable now, would just move ahead with it, would just make a decision with it because he knows, that bold version of Mark knows, that he can handle anything that gets thrown at him. He's capable of almost anything. There hasn't been a situation that he's run away from in the past. I know that. And so when I'm scared or when I'm nervous or when I don't think that it could work, I don't ask myself, will this work? I ask myself, what would the bold version of Mark do? And then I just do it whether I want to or not. We all want to grow. We all want to strive for what's next. And it starts with being incredibly honest with yourself and those that you care enough about to be honest with. It starts with telling the truth and finding the answers that you need to be able to move forward. But of course, it all starts with asking the right questions. Ooh, my back is sweating. That makes me uncomfortable. <clears throat> I don't really have anything else to say on that. <laughs> Tanya, I'm sorry for sharing that story on video. But if you want to learn, and all the viewers, why anything is possible, check out that video right there. I think you'd like it a lot, and I will see you there.